Here we are, Donald. Uh, so here is the other patch. I actually have three patches, believe it or not. Uh, this, but this is the big one, and it's almost all. Uh, it is exclusively melons, um, which are either cantaloupe or a few honeydews in here, but mainly cantaloupe. Uh, this is a pretty big bed. It's eight feet, eight feet wide and uh, about thirty feet long, and uh, it has a few fruit. Uh, it's uh, and. I should say that in my last uh, video I finished it with you don't eat the plants, you don't eat the foliage, but you do eat the fruit. Mm. Uh, but in this case the foliage is obviously in good shape and it's only just starting to retract slightly. Uh, so I, uh, I'll, I'll pan over this again and you'll see uh, some melons. The other thing you might see, uh, uh, this bed is full of frogs and bullfrogs. Uh, they move here because it's so dry in the forest uh, this time of year. They move into our garden. They really like the melons. And that's a, an extremely effective um, pest control uh, tool, right? All these frogs move in and, and live under here. Maybe I can make one jump. No. Uh, but they, they sit in here all day eating my bugs, so there's nothing wrong, wrong with that. Uh, anyways, these things are just starting to ripen uh, maybe three, four days behind those ones up the hill but you're in the hotter, drier place. But this is plenty hot and dry enough in order to uh, get good fruit. Once again, I, I'll emphasize that you're looking for the foliage to only last as long as you need to produce the fruit. Uh, these plants are resistant to wilt, but not proof of it. Uh, but that's okay as long as you get your fruit. And so I'm gonna pan over here. You'll note a couple things. We're beside a large tomato planting. On the left, you might see that. And then on the right, is a pumpkin planting which has about 15 pumpkins and it's starting to die off and uh, it, it gets diseases too but uh, all the all the uh, pumpkins are excellent and uh, it was interesting that these these melons held their own uh, planted next to pumpkins and really uh, if there was a war I'd say the, the melons won. I'll pan over here. Here we are, and we look over here, and you can see the uh, pumpkins, you can probably even, yeah, you can see one in there, I'll go closer to them. This is very hard to film because it's uh, such a large planting, right, I mean it's just ridiculous. Uh, but if you look inside, you know, there's some big melons in there, right? And uh, a couple over here, Th that one is a honeydew, these are cantaloupe, and then over here is the ones that Anne likes the best which are a couple of honeydews that kind of presented themselves out here. These are big, eh? Like if you put my hand there, you can see these are big. These are uh, like five pounds each, right? There. And uh, here and there, you can see them just acres and acres and endless melons. It's a good year. The heat has really done the trick. Some more nice big ones there. There's one of each there, a cantaloupe, right next to a honeydew. So there would be 40 or, well, probably 50 in there. And then over here is the tomato planting. I've picked tons and tons already, but uh, you can see how it's doing as well. Uh, here on the coast, we have to do this roof system for tomatoes because otherwise they get late blight and that'll extend my harvest uh, two or three weeks if it's protected from the rain. Mind you, there hasn't been any rain this year yet, so we'll see how it goes. There you go. Hope that was use useful, Donald.